Good afternoon. We'd like to welcome you to this daily COVID-19 update for the town of Plymouth. This is our 18th update coming to you live at noon on April 6, 2020. I'm Steve Trifletti, your town moderator, and we'll be here each day, Monday through Saturday at noon for this update. This forum is being brought to you live by PAC TV on Comcast channels 13 and 15 and Verizon channels 43 and 47. You can also watch this on PAC TV's streaming channel by going to pactv.org slash live. For questions during today's forum, please email us at plymouthinfo at pactv.org. These forums can be replayed at pactv.org slash Plymouth. And today our participants are going to include uh, Chairman of the Board of Selectmen, Kenneth Tavares, Plymouth State Representative, Matthew Muratori, Amy Naples from the Executive Director of Plymouth Area Chamber of Commerce, and Lynn Barrett, who is Director of Finance. We do want you to know that here at the PAC-TV studio, we are practicing social distancing. And we want to just briefly mention that when people are asked to wear a mask or a cloth in when you are outdoors, we're talking about a mask like this or a cloth, and we're not talking about taking away anything from medical personnel. We're going to show a photo of uh, actually my niece, uh, Diana Trifletti. She is an emergency room nurse, and she's wearing what is the medical mask, which is very different from the type mask that we're wearing here in the studio. And at this time, we're going to continue with our daily forum and go to Kenneth Tavares, Chair of the Board of Selectmen, with your opening statement. Welcome, Ken. Thank you, Steve, and good afternoon to everyone. Did they show the photo? For Christians, this is Holy Week, and for our Jewish brethren, Passover begins at sundown on Wednesday. These events will be observed in ways which we could not have imagined a few months ago. Which brings me to ask you to continue to practice all of our safety protocols so well laid out by local, state, and federal officials. The weather today and for the next couple of days is going to be beautiful, but this is not the time to lessen our battle with the virus. Our front lines attack. We need to be part of the solution, not part of the problem. We all have a role to play. Keep your distance, stay at home, Wear a mask if you go out and wash those hands. Parents, I plead with you to protect your children and constantly remind the older ones of the dangers of letting down their God. The Surgeon General reminded us today that the next two weeks are going to be difficult and laden with major changes. We all have roles to play. Let us commit to one another that we will do ours. Together we succeed. The changes we are asked to make are small compared to what others have, may have to endure. We are all surrounded by the best. Each of us needs to do our part. Plymouth Strong. Thank you. Thank you. And that's Kenneth Tavares, Chair of the Board of Selectmen. And as you hear each day, the executive branch of your local government is in close contact with the legislative branch. And tomorrow, uh, Kenneth Tavares and I will be meeting with several other officials to be further reviewing Plymouth Town Meeting, which has been declared to be continued at least until May 30. And later this week, on Thursday, there will be a Plymouth Town Meeting Committee of Precinct Chairs Forum on Thursday at 1.30, at which time we'll provide a more complete update as to the plans for town meeting. We also want you to know that not only are we working with local, state, and federal officials, but also in government, the judiciary branch uh, is also actively working. I can report to you that at 11 a.m. today, I participated in a court hearing that was done telephonically. It was the local Plymouth Probate Court, but none of us were together. We were all separate on the phone. Uh, probate Judge Judge Connolly presided. He's also a Kingston resident. And there was an attorney uh, for the opposing party from Plymouth who joined me and our clients at this hearing. And we completed it in less than an hour. And so we would want you to know that there is government continuing at all levels. And at this time, with our local Plymouth government, we're delighted to have the Director of Finance, Lynn 
Barrett. And Lynn, how, please tell us what's happening in your corner of the town of Plymouth. Um, well, um, basically, all of our, the finance departments are working remotely to the extent possible that we can. Um, we do have to access um, the building, at least on payroll, um, but each office is working remotely. The accounting and payroll office is working remotely. The assessing office is reworking, working remotely and the collector treasurer's office is working remotely. Um, some of the things that I just want to bring to everyone's attention is um, we, we encourage people, um, even though it is a difficult time to um, try to, um, um, we sent out motor vehicle excise shortly before we, um, shortly before this sort of happened and, and the due date March 30th. Um, so we encourage people to try to pay um, that if they can. The legislature has um, given us an opportunity to uh, waive um, penalties and interest um, if people cannot pay online. So that is something that we are going to consider. So we have left um, the online portal for motor vehicle excise up on our website link. It's taken down after the due date, um, not to allow people to pay online, but we have continued to allow that. So we encourage people to continue to do that online. Um, and um, also, um, just to give you an idea, the this motor vehicle excise um, billing that we did includes bills, probably over 60,000 bills that went out to um, residents of the town of Plymouth that have vehicles. Um, this is a significant part of the drink for our budget, even though uh, it's near the end of the fiscal year. So we do, that's why we do encourage people um, to try to pay it as soon as they can or able to. Um, because this um, helps support um, our budget. Um, let's see, the payment options for all of the bills, motor vehicle excise, real estate and personal property, um, um, any other water or sewer, um, things like that. We do, we have posted a payment options um, on the website, on the COVID-19 information part of the website. So if you need uh, further information about what your payment options are, you can go to that um, link on that page. Um, it's called payment options. So it, it's on the COVID-19 um, update page on the red toolbar um, on the front page. So uh, one of the items in there is called payment options. Let's see, so some of those options are obviously paying off. Um, another option is to pay by mail to 26 Court Street. And then in your bills that you got, there's also an option to pay by lockbox. So there's a lockbox envelope with the lockbox address that you can send your payment to. Um, we also are collecting the drop box, which is at Town Hall to the left of the floor. On the, on the back of the building towards the collector's office. We do accept payment through that portal. We just don't ask that you put any cash in um, slot. We just want um, checks. Um, vote excise is due May 18th. Um, real estate and personal property taxes are going to be due May 1st. We do have the option of extending that date out until June 1st. That's something that we are considering. The legislature um, made that available to us um, last Friday. So we're putting uh, a recommendation together for the um, town manager to approve. Um, the water department actually just finished reading our fourth quarter water and sewer bills. So that commitment is gonna be sent to the collector treasurer within the next couple of weeks and they'll be sending that bill out to the printer and um, for mail, um, probably by the middle of April and the end of April, and that bill would be due 30 days later. Um, that is our fourth quarter water and sewer bill. As you know, this year, we implemented quarterly billing. Um, 
So this is the debate of those four quarters. And we encourage people to try to pay that bill or at least pay it by um, June 29th um, of, of this fiscal year. Um, having said that, um, all of those due dates, again, the legislature has um, uh, allowed us to waive any penalties or interest. So those are options that we are considering. Um, so if you can't pay on time, um, we just ask that you please pay by June 29th. Uh, if you don't pay by that date, then um, penalty, penalties and interest would, would accrue after that, back to the date that those bills were due. Um, let's see. Uh, and that, that's all the information I have really for like taxpayers on paying of bills. The other thing that um, we're working on is for town meeting, as Steve said, uh, right now it's been extended out to May 30th. Um, our budget is white is one way um, our printer who has the town meeting book for town meeting members. Um, they're putting those together, and we're hoping that she can coordinate um, the printer actually mailing those out to town meeting members directly. Um, normally, they get shipped back to town hall, and then we put together the envelopes and the postage and, and, and put all the books into that envelope. So um, Jeanette is working with the printer um, currently this week to see those out directly. So that's the information that I have um, right now. Thank you. That is Lynn Barrett. She is the Director of Finance. She'll be here for your questions, which you can email to PlymouthInfo at PACTV.org. And as Lynn said, <laughs> she and I and Ken Tavares and several other officials will be having a virtual meeting tomorrow morning to further review the manner in which we're going to proceed with Plymouth Town Meeting, and we'll have more updates for you this week. And at this time... We're going to go to Amy Naples. She's the Executive Director, Plymouth Area Chamber of Commerce. Welcome, Amy. Thank you, Steve, and good afternoon, everybody. Um, today, I wanted to talk about some free and confidential counseling services available to businesses through our partners at SCORE and the Massachusetts Small Business Development Center. Both of these organizations are funded by the SBA. And the counselors have diverse backgrounds and so much experience assisting small businesses. You can schedule a virtual appointment with them by visiting SEMA.score.org or MSBDC.org backslash SEMASS. Again, those are free virtual sessions to help you with any aspect of your business. And you can certainly find that on the Chamber of Commerce website as well. Um, in addition, there's a number of virtual education, trainings, and networking sessions happening around the Commonwealth. The Plymouth Area Chamber of Commerce is hosting two networking events each week, which is on Wednesday mornings at 10 a.m. and Thursday evenings at 5 p.m. In addition, a webinar on Friday mornings at 10 a.m. This week's topic is um, tips for working from home, which is great for pretty much everybody now. Um, in addition, the SBA is hosting a series of webinars to assist with questions around the disaster loan and the Paycheck Protection Program. And you can visit the SBA.gov for information about those webinars. The Chamber is here to help businesses, business owners uh, along the South Shore, whether you're members or not. And we've compiled um, a number of relevant information to help navigate from the business perspective. So you can certainly visit PlymouthChamber.com, the COVID-19 page, and where you'll find all of that information. The website is updated very frequently. And if there's something you can't find, you can certainly reach out to me directly. Lastly, I wanted to say, our community is absolutely amazing. We have so many people and businesses who are providing meals to our healthcare heroes, to others providing protection, gifts, and more. So I decided um, each time I'm on the show to highlight a couple briefly. Dirty Water Distillery, located on Plymouth Waterfront, has been providing free hand sanitizer to the community organizations, basically anyone. Um, they're doing this as a goodwill to all of us and lending a hand to keep us safe. Another business is Dog Spot Design, which is Abby Hatton. 
she's typically making bandanas and um, dog blankets for the, our dog loving community, but she shifted gears and has been sewing hundreds upon hundreds of face masks for our local healthcare heroes and members of the community who need them. Um, our community has truly come together and we're so proud of it. And especially to see these businesses stepping up and doing what they can during these uncertain times. So, and I asked you always to support our local small businesses, however that may be. They need us more than ever now. Um, you can certainly purchase a gift card online, order takeout, call to set up a service. Honestly, any, anything you can do, call to check in and see what you could do to help. And that is our business update for today. Thank you, and that was Amy Naples. She's the Executive Director for the Plymouth Area Chamber of Commerce. Please send her your questions to PlymouthInfo at PACTV.org. Each day we do these updates to provide you with verified information from officials and experts as we continue to respond to the coronavirus uh, with the Town of Plymouth uh, support. And at this time, we're now going to our state daily update from Representative Matthew Muratori. Welcome, Matt. Good afternoon, Steve. So let me give you the numbers from this uh, past weekend to give you an update. Um, the total number of people that have been tested, this is through noontime uh, yesterday, which is April 5th, was almost 72,000 people, 71,937. Of those people tested, uh, about uh, it's about less than 17% of the 12,500 cases that we actually have as of yesterday noontime. Uh, that's a little bit less than 1% of the entire population of the Commonwealth. In addition, in Plymouth County, as of yesterday, uh, April 5th, we've had 963 cases. And in Plymouth alone, we have 41 cases. Um, of, the, um, of the total number of uh, cases, 12,500, we've had 231 deaths in the Commonwealth. Uh, which is uh, less than about 2%. And the uh, number of hospitalizations um, were 1,145, which is about 9% of the, uh, the folks who had uh, contracted the, uh, the virus. Um, last week, we were talking about uh, long-term care, which includes rest homes, nursing homes, and assisted livings. And last week, uh, the National Guard had got involved in testing a number of uh, folks who live in these facilities. Last week, there were 1,237 tests in 69 different long-term care facilities. Uh, so we're now up to, uh, there's a 551 folks who live in these facilities who have tested positive for the coronavirus. Um, and, um, uh, and those are in, in uh, there's at least one case in 102 of these facilities throughout the Commonwealth. And as we stated last week, there's almost 700 of these facilities in the Commonwealth. Um, I also wanted to break down today just the ages, which I've done in the past periodically, because uh, this is going to tell you by age group who has contracted the virus, and it doesn't discriminate by age group, but it does have a huge effect on our elderly population. Uh, the age group, uh, anybody under the age of 19, uh, there have been 290 cases. Ages between 20 and 29, 1,773 cases. Between ages 30 and 39, 2,064 cases between ages of 40 and 49, 2,074 cases, between the ages of 50 and 59, 2,465 cases, between the ages of 60 and 69, 1,735, greater than 70 years old, 2,098. But if you look at the number of the 231 deaths that have happened, um, a good majority of those are over the age of 70 years old. And almost every single person in that category um, has had an underlying health condition uh, that has caused the death. Um, so th this this week, next week, uh, as we're all being told, um, th the surge is coming here now. The next two weeks are going to be crucial for all of us. Um, if you don't have to go out uh, to a store or, or a pharmacy, don't. Um, if you do, uh, try to make one trip and get it done and, and be home and just stay inside as much as you can. Uh, if you do go out, obviously wear a mask if you're going to the stores, um, but, but try and stay in these next couple of weeks. These next couple of weeks are going to be crucial to us uh, to get into flattening this curve. Yesterday, the governor announced that at Gillette Stadium, you all may have saw that uh, there is now a, a drive-through test area uh, for first responders. 
and it's open from nine to five. It's going to be open seven days a week, and it's uh, they're going to do about 200 tests a day. Uh, but it is just for first responders at this point, and the results will be uh, will be uh, got back to them within 24 to 48 hours. And the reason we're doing that is uh, obviously our first responders uh, they can't practice social distancing in a lot of cases, and they all have families to go home to. So we need to make sure that you know they're protected as as much as they possibly can, and by knowing if they have the virus or not will really help that process along. And finally, um, as, I, as I say every day, um, we want to make sure that if you uh, are able to give blood, that you do that. Uh, there's safe ways to do that. If you have a business that you can actually have a blood drive, uh, please uh, contemplate having a blood drive as well. Also, want to there are plenty of volunteer opportunities as well. And uh, the governor has been asking for this for about a week now. And they're amazing how many people are coming forward uh, who are healthcare workers or first responders who are coming out uh, of retirement or coming to volunteer that have a background. Um, so continue to ask for volunteers. We continue to ask for donations or, or the sale of PPE equipment, although we are doing better in that case. Uh, we still need PPE equipment. In some cases, uh, personal protection equipment, uh, there's only five to seven days in a lot of healthcare facilities. So more is needed. So it's nice to hear, Amy, that we have people in the community that are actually um, you know, sewing masks together, it's, it's great. We, we still really need that. So, uh, and finally, if you are sick, I haven't said this in a while, but if you do feel you have the symptoms, telehealth is available to all residents of, of the Commonwealth now. You just need to contact your healthcare provider. Uh, they'll do it right over the phone, just like we're doing now. They'll do Zoom or they'll do a FaceTime with you or talk to you over the phone so you don't have to go in the doctor's office. Uh, and they can uh, advise you at that point. And that is the update for today, Steve. Thank you. That's Representative Matthew Muratori. You can call, uh, send your questions to him at PlymouthInfo at PACTV.org. We have been in touch with the local hospital here in Plymouth. And as Representative M Muratori uh, just said, if you're experiencing any one of the following COVID-19 symptoms, uh, fever, sore throat, nasal congestion, shortness of breath, or a headache, or if you've traveled to any of the countries listed on the CDC's travel warnings, or if you've been in contact with someone, please contact your primary care provider prior to visiting the hospital. And also, if you're experiencing a medical emergency, call 911. If you'd like more information from the Massachusetts Department of Public Health, you can call 211. We have been doing these forums each day. We've been in touch not only with our state representatives, uh, but at the federal level today, we'll be having a special forum at 1.30 p.m. We'll be joined by Congressman William Keating. He's the congressman for Plymouth. In addition, we'll be joined by three legislators. Uh, Representative Matthew Muratori will be returning with Representative Kathleen Lenatra and Representative Josh Cutler. We'll also be bringing back some of our uh, former participants in the medical field. They include uh, Dr. Philip Trefletti. He is attending physician at Beth Israel Deaconess. Also, Dr. Mark Wilson. He is from the School of Public Health in the uh, area of epidemiology from the University of Michigan. He's a Plymouth resident. Also, Plymouth psychologist Russell Fry and local uh, priest from the St. Mary's and St. Joseph's Collaborative, Father John Cullody. They'll all be joining us today at 1.30 for a special regional presentation. And tomorrow we'll be back here again at 12 o'clock and Representative Muratori and Selectman Chair Kenneth Tavares and I will be joined by uh, a number of guests. They include Stephen Cole, who is the Executive Director for the Plymouth Regional Economic Foundation, also, Daniel Kelly, he's the program director for the Plymouth Recovery uh, Center, and once again, joining us with the explanation of the new health guidelines, we have the director of Plymouth Public Health, Karen Keene, and also the chairwoman for the Plymouth Board of Health, and that is Brigitte Keene uh, from Plymouth. So uh, again, we'll be back with you uh, tomorrow, but today uh, we have our guests here, uh, and you can send your questions to PlymouthInfo at PACTV.org. Each day, we also go back to our panel to give them an opportunity to send 
uh, provide us with any additional comments or closing message that they might like to leave with us now that they've heard all the participants. And uh, we'll be doing that uh, now, and we're going to go back to Lynn Barrett, and she is the Director of Finance. Lynn, uh, welcome again. What would you like to leave people with today if there's one message that you could uh, remind them? Thank you. Um, okay, thanks, Steve. Um, and thanks again for having me on the show today. I think um, we know these are really tough times, and um, we would just like to encourage people um, to, you know, try to pay their bills as as well as they can. But if they are having issues, to just reach out to us. Um, we are going to be waiving uh, penalties and interest on those bills that are due um, during the month of, of March, April, May. Um, so just reach out to us. If you're having difficulties paying something, um, either online or um, through Lockbox or something like that, just reach out to us. You can reach out through my email address, um, albarrett at townhall.plymouth.ma.us or to our treasurer collector, which is um, P. Borgatti at townhall.plymouth.ma.us. So um, just if we just, we're here for you. If you have any issues, just reach out to us. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. That is Lynn Barrett, the director of finance. And certainly you can also go to the town website to get her contact information, that of the treasurer and that of other officials in the town of Plymouth. We're now going to return to Amy Naples, the executive director Plymouth Area Chamber of Commerce. Amy, what would you like people to remember today? So one message today I think I'd like to leave with you all is just think about what you can do to help either a business or a member of our community. I think it's so important that we concentrate on positive things because we are in this together and we will get through this together. So concentrate on the positive, see where you can lend a hand to your neighbors, to the seniors in our community, to the local businesses, however it may be. As always, if I can be of any assistance, certainly feel free to call the chamber office at 508-830-1620, or you can reach me by email at amy, A-M-Y, at plymouthchamber.com. I also want to tell you um, and give kudos to um, Steve, Julie Thompson, Ken, and Matt, who worked so hard to provide this great update to the community daily. My parents are your number one fans. They watch daily. Hi, mom and dad. <laughs> and um, I get more emails saying how happy people are to be able to tune in daily to get a great informational update. So I just want to commend you on your hard work. And thank you again for providing this to our community. So thank, and also thank you to all our viewers for supporting our local businesses. Stay home, social, social distance, um, and support locally. Thank you. Thank you. That was Amy Naples, Executive Director from the Plymouth Area Chamber of Commerce. And uh, yes, Amy, yesterday my wife was out uh, for a drive and stopped to chat with a couple of neighbors who were walking. They were keeping their distance. But again, the neighbors commented about how grateful they were to be receiving this information uh, from the town. As we do each day, one of the questions that has come in, uh, Representative Matthew Muratori, was whether or not there are any confirmed COVID-19 cases in the Pine Hills. I know we've been providing information for the town of Plymouth each day. Uh, how would you respond to that viewer? Well, Steve, how, how I respond to that is there, there's federal regulations called HIPAA regulations. And you really can't, on somebody's health information, really relay where they live. Um, and I think trying to track people down to certain parts of the of the uh, of the town would be would fall probably fall under that. So I, I wouldn't recommend that that happening. I don't think it will happen. I think the town just gets where they are. Uh, I'm sorry, the numbers that they are. And if they have to trace people, they'll be contacting people to say, "Hey, you may have been in contact with somebody." Um, but to actually give out numbers for a section of town, I, that wouldn't be advisable according to uh, the HIPAA regulations. Thank you. And uh, Representative Mayor Troy, there was also a question regarding the spend down for the $2,000. And if you could clarify that a little more, there was a little confusion about that. Yeah, so I, I think what they're talking about, there's a $2,000 spend down if you're in a long-term care facility, if you're in a nursing facility. Um, and the money that's coming in from the federal government, that if you get a check for $1,200, uh, that free money that's coming in, so, so to speak, 
uh, that will not affect your uh, your eligibility for Mass Health. Thank you. And now, uh, Representative Matthew Muratori, as we go through, uh, what would be a takeaway that you'd like viewers to remember from today's presentation? Well, thanks, Steve. And uh, I, I just, um, um, I'm glad people are tuning in. I'm glad Amy mentioned that. Thank you, Amy, that people are watching. Uh, you really need to get your information from factual resources. And I, and I think we all are. I think it's great to have this forum to do that. Um, I would, you know, continue to remind people that, you know, stay home. Uh, we are in the surge now. The next two weeks are going to be very critical. Uh, but stay calm. Enjoy the time that you actually have with your family. It's, I think it's a gift in a lot of ways. Um, that, you know, our lives are so busy, but now we're able to spend some time with the family. So enjoy it while you can. Uh, but stay informed. Uh, you can go to mass.gov backslash COVID-19. Ask questions by calling 211. Or get alerts on your by text by texting COVID MA to eight 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 seven seven seven. And if you have questions on your health, you can go to buoy b u o y dot com backslash mass. Put in your information, and they'll give you uh, they'll give you some advice on your health. So, uh, and I as I close every day saying, you know, remember the more we come together by staying apart, the faster we'll get back to the people we love and the things we love to do. So thank you again, Steve, and to PAC TV and to all our essential workers that are out there working on our behalf. Thank you, Representative Matthew Miratori. We'll be seeing you shortly within the hour at 1.30 for the regional update. The Beth yeah. Israel Deaconess Hospital located in Plymouth wants us to know that the Plymouth Blood Drawing Station at 110 Long Pond Road is accepting appointments for patient convenience and safety during the COVID-19 crisis. And the Long Pond Road Blood Drawing Station is open Monday through Friday, 7.30 to 3.30 p.m. You can schedule an appointment by calling 508-830-2466. And each day we close with a message from the town of Plymouth from Kenneth Tavares, Chair of the Board of Selectmen. Ken, your closing thoughts. Thank you. I uh, just uh, want to follow up on with everything that's been said so far is that uh, we are handling the situation well in Plymouth. There are daily challenges, but uh, they are being solved. I just ask for the community's cooperation. Keep doing what you're doing, and we will be successful. Thank you. Thank you. I want to thank all of our participants today, Kenneth Tavares, Chair of the Board of Selectmen, Representative Matthew Muratori, Plymouth State Representative Lynn Barrett, the Director of Finance, Amy Naples, the Executive Director, Plymouth Area Chamber of Commerce. And looking to tomorrow, Ken, Matt, and I will be joined by Stephen Cole, the Executive Director, Plymouth Regional Economic Development Foundation, Daniel Kelly, he's the Program Director for the Plymouth Recovery Center, Brikita Keen, she is the Chairwoman for the Plymouth Board of Health, and Karen Keen, the Director of Public Health. Uh, we'll also tomorrow be providing an update regarding Plymouth's town meeting after we have a planning session tomorrow morning. Uh, my name is Steve Trifletti, Plymouth Town Moderator. Thank you. Good day. We'll see you tomorrow. Thank you.